Uh, Cyborg Voice, this meeting is being recorded. I'm Christy Strau. I am the prof possibility to profit coach. This is my new tagline. I'm having, it's not rolling off my tongue the way it should. This is my contact information. If you have a pile of creative possibilities and you want to turn those into a profitable business, I can help. Today, I'm talking to Claudia Palmera, which I'm very psyched about. This is Claudia's contact or places you can find her on the web and, and also TikTok and Facebook and YouTube, which I should be writing down, but at least these places, these are three places that we can find you. The top one is your, I guess I would say your day job, kind of. Well, it's my hub actually. Your home. It's, yeah, it's, it kind of says who I am and links you to all the other yeah. places. Yeah. Smart. The second one by clue.com has your new design objects yeah that's my specifically a line of of artist objects yeah which i love and adore and then your instagram handle so people can find you on yeah. instagram too claudia yeah. is uh <laughs> my brain I, i've got artist and designer having a little war inside my head oh <laughs> they're, they're both perfectly Legitimate and lovely. So artist designer. I, yeah. That's what I would say. Yeah. And what I wanted to start talking about is we should talk about your art though for a minute before I talk about the dreaded critic, inner and outer critic. So talk about the purpose of your art. What do you want it to do in the world? Yeah. Um, well, I, I would love for my art to be a sort of reminder when people experience or see it or feel it, it's a reminder that there is a, a higher plane or, um, uh, an ethereal plane mm -hmm. that is joyful, beautiful, transcendent, and, um, mystical perhaps even, and it's also a kind of exploration of, of layers of reality, you know, what we choose to experience, what we, you know, what, where we are tuning into, right? Yeah. The expression of beauty and harmony for me, and maybe more harmony than beauty is, is really important because to me, that is a transcendent place and brings me at least to a, a, a sense of peace and this, you know, sense of love almost as well. Yeah. Yeah, which is so important. I'm kind of reflecting. I downstairs in my living room, I have a whole splash of paintings, and it the feeling is transcendent when I look at them. It really matters. It's different when for me and the energy in the house when I have paintings on the wall and when I have art versus when it's not there. It really matters. And I know you and I we worked hard on figuring out how to talk about your art. So the people, yeah, the people who need it and want it understand that what you're doing is what they need. I kind of, this might put you on the spot a little bit, but you have one of your gorgeous paintings behind you. Thanks, yes. Uh, so yeah. yeah, talk about that for a second. Would you, and especially the thing about the layers? Yeah, this is part of a new series. I mean, you can't, oh, there. Yeah. 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 Um, th yeah, this uh, is part of a series inspired by poetry. Mm. I love poetry. Poetry for me, it does with words what I feel I want to do with images. Mm -hmm. And um, this is from an ancient poem uh, by a Latin poet, Ovid, oh. who wrote the Metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. and there, are, there are lines in the Metamorphosis that have really inspired me and really given me a lot to think about. And um, anyway, so this there is there is some hint of, of actual typography. And I, I think this is also for my being in the world of graphic design. Like I do love typography, I love text. I do too. And yeah, so it's hard sometimes not to want to put it here, but it's it's different from design because it doesn't need to actually communicate anything. It doesn't even need to be visible. <laughs> like I can it can disappear in color and, and stuff. So there are layers in this 
And I do work with layers and, and layered pieces. Mm -hmm. How did you choose to put that painting behind you? This little space behind me in um, my Zoom computer, let's just say my work computer is, a, is like a constantly changing backdrop. Mm -hmm. So I, I just rotate it as I, you know, have a new painting or, you know, just want to change it up because, you know, I'm on Zoom a lot and people see it and they ask and I don't always want to show the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that totally makes sense. So it's kind of like a rotating gallery behind you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. A little installation. So it's really cool. Thanks. You could change that every single time, can't you? Every time, like once a week or something. Yeah, I, if I got that, would be great if I could do that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit, it's a big. So you know, it's like a yeah. thing. But, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe the next time we get on Zoom, you can put some of the trays behind you. Ooh. That would be so cool. Can you hold up one of the, is one of the trays, is it within reach? Not, I can run, dash and get it if you go. Dash and get it, no. Go? Okay. So one of the reasons I'm asking Claudia to go get this tray is that, and something that we've been talking about a lot is the intersection between art and design. There's this idea that design is the redheaded stepchild of art somehow, you know, a designer is an artist who gave up and that's no. just not true. So not true. So not true. yeah. So let's see the tray. There are many amazing designers in the world. Yes, there are. It's possible that even I would say, I, I know this sounds strange, but you know, the creator, right? The, the higher power that is the creator yeah. is more of a, possibly more of a designer than an artist. <laughs> now there's an irony. Right. So, yeah. So this is so beautiful. What What's the name of this? So this is um, a peony, and it's a it's a drawing. I know it's got the uh, the protective coating on it. It's a it's a hand drawing that I did, and it's just it's put onto layers of yeah. uh, color. Then I have other side other ones too. So I have this little one. Yeah. These and all of them have a little word in there somewhere oh. that you can catch if you really look at it, right? So this one is, I love this. This one's called void, <laughs> the void. <laughs> so it's like little smoky. It, oh, hold that one up too. Oh yeah, that's that one's with the bird. I love that one. Yeah, and this is fortuitous. This is. So these are like little meditation objects in addition to being um, utilitarian. I mean, that you can use yeah. them. Yeah, I like the idea that there, that you would be reminded, you know, in your daily life, oh, oh, right, fortuitous, I don't know. It's yeah. something would trigger that idea. But yeah. I think subtlety is very important to me. Like, I'm not just gonna write it out. I mean, I write that, that could be a style too. Just like write the word. Right. I mean, I'm a designer, I'm a graphic designer, and I can envision things in lots of different ways. You know what I mean? Like different mm -hmm. fonts. Right? Just, I think when I do my artwork, I'm not doing it for that. I think that's a really big difference is that in the design is somehow a collaboration with people, with energy, with, with other, you know, it's really, art is a little bit more like what's my thing that I need to move through. Yeah, that's a really good distinction, I think. Design is collaboration, in a sense. In a sense, because people use design. Yeah. You know, they, so a chair with, you know, three legs or something, you know what I mean? Like, no one wants to use that and they wouldn't call it art. Mm. I don't think so. Yeah, so these are this, like, they're totally usable, right? They're like melamine, durable washable yeah i mean i i hate to even attribute words like that to it but you know it is yeah but it's also not it's also like something that i don't know people are like oh i want to hang that on the wall I'm right like, yeah all right how about using it though <laughs> well, i don't know <laughs> yeah that's a that's really cool the idea you know that Sometimes that I think about that as being the ultimate luxury is that the things that you use every day are beautiful. Oh my God. 
and the it's thing still important. it is important yeah, yeah. It's important. maybe not important to everybody but boy it sure is to me the the idea that what i'm using it's not just it doesn't just function but it's also beautiful there's something really sacred about an object that does its job and is beautiful yeah that's true it's sacred and it's really special it is and yeah. I, I mean i early in my career i was very influenced by like the eames couple mm -hmm. charles ray eames and and you know people who were really embracing design alone as that as that as you just said like that sacred space mm -hmm. of creating things that were you know transcending the ordinary yeah. beautiful but also functional yes yeah you know? that's a that's a balancing act to be able to make those both of those things happen yeah it's true <laughs> this very reminds me have you ever heard that anecdote about frank lloyd wright the architect you know he designed these beautiful houses and people would be pissed because the roofs always leaked. And, like, and he would say, you know, tough, this is a work of art. But it would have enhanced it a teeny bit if the roofs hadn't leaked, I think. So I want to talk a minute about your, our, everyone's inner critics. And I know uh, you have really been able to work with your own inner critic in your head. How, yeah. how do you, you done that? How did that happen? Well, I would say that being like in the design world, right? Mm -hmm. And working with art directors, creative directors, clients, um, being an art director, but having to work with, you know, clients or other, you know what I mean? It, it can really train you that creativity is a fluid thing and if, if, if you have to make a change, you can make a change. And it's not really that personal. You can't get really that attached to, to you know, that thing, right? In that realm. So it, that was good practice. I think getting to the blank canvas page or whatever mm -hmm. is a totally different thing in a sense, because then it's like, what do you want to say? What, what are you trying to say, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where the voices can be really loud, like nothing, <laughs> right. There's nothing to say, go back to car, right? Or who do you think you are? Yeah. Like Picasso, like there already was one. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're doing it and it's just like that person. Oh God, right. Do they already do that? Yes. It's just right. like only not quite as good. Right. So, you know, like, are you an imposter? Are you an imitator? Is it, I mean, and those, that can be loud. It can be so loud. Yeah. I think in the early days of like, let's say recovering that artist, because as a child that didn't exist, it was pure. It's just like create, yes. You know, disproportionate limbs yeah. or you know, sun as big as the flower, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Like or a flower as big as the sun, I mean, all those things. So to recover that innocence of expression, um, I think it was really about just doing it. Uh, just and like down and do doing it, it and mm -hmm. doing it and, and making it. And um, I also, for a short time, I, yes, I did. I had a, I had like a, a little group of artists who were similar in similar place from me. Some of them were a little more ahead and some of them were even less ahead. Mm -hmm. And we met weekly for a while yeah. and shared about this process. And that really helped because we were all doing something different. Mm -hmm. And so what we got to realize is like, oh, like even though I feel like I'm not an original or whatever, whatever, like actually they're doing, they're not trying to do that. Mm -hmm. They're right. not really doing that at all. Mm -hmm. And they think what I'm doing is like different from what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Even if we use the same techniques or something like collage or whatever. Yeah. So I think doing and, and detaching from the results and detaching from the outcomes of what I'm doing, yeah. you know, it's possible that what I'm doing is bad. Like, oh, well, it's possible that it failed. It's possible that, you know, I tried that. It didn't work, mm -hmm. you know, onward. And that's why I said the connection of like being a graphic designer and just being like, okay, well, we'll just move that over, you know, we'll 
we think that one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's up right now so people can go and look at the stuff that you've done that is, you know, I, that word successful. I, agree, I think it's successful. I think the stuff, the stuff that's on the buyclue.com is gorgeous. Thank you. Um, it's a slippery slope, the, the word successful, a little bit. I agree. I agree, especially in this like realm of social media. Yeah. How many likes did I get? Yeah, it's it, where there's more of a quantity thing. Yeah, yeah. Right? Whereas I think in the past it was different, you know, what, and, and there's, you know, there, it, it it needs to be taken kind of like lightly in a sense. It does. It's a funny double-edged sword, I think, because in the past, I mean, Instagram is such a huge tool for artists that didn't exist, you know, whatever, 10 years ago. I mean, yeah. the, we never would have, well, we might have not, but, but to be able to see each other's work on Instagram, it's big. And so it's a huge tool for creatives and, you know, like it's such a magnifying tool, but, but that dark side of, how many likes did I get? And did somebody quit following me because I said something controversial? Oh my God. You know, she's, that's a harsh taskmaster. Yeah. It's, I, I don't want to be driven by that for sure. So how have you, how do you meet the fear, if you even have very much of it anymore, of putting stuff out there and letting people see it? Well, I, I mean, I, I do like to curate mm -hmm. my image in the world. I mean, that's part of what I do. <laughs> like, it's it's really what I love to do, frankly. So, so I I'm aware of that, um, but I'm also not too fussy. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't fuss too too much. Yeah. Um, because, and I think I was really influenced by a, there was a marketing, there is a marketing like um, um, writer, author, really well known. And his, he, his, his whole thing was ship it. Yeah, Seth Godin. Yeah, yeah ship it. Out there. Right, that part of the process is actually getting it out there. I mean, as long as it's not a big fat pile of crap, get it out there and get some feedback. Right, because it's not gonna mean anything staying hidden. It isn't. No. For me, like putting, being a designer, working with a client and putting their image out there, that is something easy. I don't have to think about that, right? They've approved it. They like it. It's serving a purpose for them. I'm the invisible or semi-visible hands that put it together. Right. But when it's artwork, i.e. my soul, my vision, the thing that came through me in this head and out there, then it's really vulnerable. Like, like, you know, and, and the thing is when I put my artwork out there and my artwork, a lot of times is abstract or has a lot of abstraction in it, people see what they want to see in it. They feel what they want to feel. So I hear things about my paintings that I never would have thought of. Mm -hmm. I receive feedback that I never would have considered yeah. and I have to let go of that. Yeah. People project onto the artwork, which kind of we want them to do in a way, because it's all about evoking emotion. But yeah, it's really interesting. Once you make something and put it out in the world, you almost don't own it anymore. It's out, no. you're the mom, and this is the kid, and the kid is out doing his work. Once, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's really interesting. And that whole, I think it's Julia Cameron with the whole artist way thing and the morning pages and stuff, where she says that the creator or the, we are in charge of the footwork and the creator, whoever you think that is, is in charge of the results. And the- I totally agree with that. Yeah. And I think it's part of my approach to, because also it's in a, in a sense, I can make it, it's none of my business than what it's, I mean, it is my business, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, as you just, you just said it perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really hard. I've written about this a bunch is that the, when in Procter and Gamble, you know, they put out a new toothpaste and it doesn't sell. They don't all throw themselves on the floor in the conference room and start crying. They, they yeah. fix it. Right. <laughs> or right. you know, change it or they sell something else. You know, it's, and I don't think I'll ever 
detach from being from my reactions to or what other people are doing reacting to my writing but but you're right it's not our business once we finish it we do our best we stick it out there and let it go do its work also i mean if i'm a channel and not exactly the, you know if i'm not taking all the credit here yes but right. if I'm doing something else mm -hmm. then i can let go of that too mm -hmm. right so you know i do like to open myself up to this idea of the channel when I'm creating, because it almost, it helps me let go also yeah. Yeah. of that voice. Because if, if it's not, if it's not me, if it's not the ego, if it's not the I, mm -hmm. then it's something else greater, more powerful, maybe even loving and caring. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then it's okay. Like I'll put it out there. Yeah. And then also in a sense, credit, that internally at least right right that we can't take credit or the blame yeah it's so really interesting it help, that helps a lot it does yeah that helps me too and that's a really good thing to say out loud is that we're i'm i think about this when i give speeches at toastmasters that i'm the truck <laughs> i'm the delivery vehicle for the thing and you know that's another thing the delivery vehicle doesn't go like this oh my god the delivery right. vehicle just delivers the stuff you know without drama so not that that's so easy to do but well thank you so much thanks for class this has been i want to hold this up one more time this is how you find claudia go look at buyclue.com and see her new design objects because they're absolutely gorgeous and if you'd like to talk to me about your creative pile of <laughs> of chaos and turning it into a business i can help you do that Thank you so much. This has been a blast. Thank you.